Okay. So I want to welcome everyone to the Creatives Roundtable. I'm your host, Nancy Bruzzo. For those of you who are new here, the Creatives Roundtable is an accountability group and creative community that meets monthly in online groups of six people to help you with the business side of your creative business. By breaking your goals into bite-sized tasks that are manageable, talking through hot topics, getting feedback from one another, and reviewing one another's websites. We've been doing that lately. We have accountability groups as well as a closed Slack community. This is where conversations take place daily about work events, questions and answers, like what printer do you recommend, what color are your office walls, Am I'm, I'm too busy for this job, who has time, how do you make an animated GIF, and things like that, or GIF, whichever way you roll. Once a month, we have these three uh, CR60 minute events with special speakers, which are free to our accountability group members and 50% off for our Slack group members. You're welcome to take a look and join us. I'll put the link in the chat. While I'm doing the rest of the introduction, I'm going to ask you to put your LinkedIn URL, including HTTPS, so people can click on it in the chat. Upcoming events are April, Why You Need a Genuine Personality Brand, which is really about helping your about page, which is a great thing to do. In May, how TikTok and short form video can elevate your business. In June, three steps to uncomplicate your marketing and attract more dream customers. And in July, Canva for creative cloud users. The, the, uh, the uh, devil Canva. In the fall, we have the Affinity Workshop, a trademark and copyright event, and a whole bunch more. You'll be getting emails to attend because of your attendance today, and you can, of course, opt out for the emails. We love for our attendees, if possible, to keep their videos on to support our presenter. And now a little bit about her. Jamie Ratterman is a social media and brand strategist with 10 years experience brand building brands by curating social media content, cultivating key partnerships, building brand identities, and data analysis. With her experience of working with big brands such as TripAdvisor and Financial Gym to companies just getting their start, she can help you focus on what will give you the best returns to your brand for your brand and your time. And she has a bunch of workshops and we'll give you her information at the end as well. So I'm um, going to ask everyone to stay on mute. Um, you can, if she asks for, for people to, con to uh, contribute, you can unmute yourself and you can also put things in the chat. And uh, you can take it away, Jamie. Amazing. Yeah, I would I definitely love for all of you to get, jump in the chat. I'm a firm believer of Zoom room energy. So by all means, feel free to ask questions throughout. I'll try to stop in and make sure. So let me go ahead and show you guys the devil of I have a Canva presentation. So give me one second and I'll show you in a moment. All right, go, go, go ahead and let me know. I'm going to go ahead and press the present button here. Okay, everyone see my screen? Can I get a thumbs up? We're good to go? Amazing, okay. So big things here is I'm so excited. I talked to Nancy at the end of last year and I've been like waiting to get in this awesome group that she's been telling me about. So I'm so happy to be here. I definitely love the fact that I get to talk about LinkedIn because I have been telling a lot of my clients that Instagram isn't the only place to be. So it's really fun for me to hop in here and talk to you guys about that. So what I did get is where you guys are, the weather you're doing, but I do try my best. I've had a lot of coffee today, so I'm going to try to help brainstorm ideas of how I can implement exactly what you do. So please drop in the chat what you do so I can have a good idea of how I might be able to help you personalize the strategies I'm about to give you into your business. Nancy gave a really wonderful introduction for me. So while you guys do that in the chat, I'll go ahead and just tell you a little bit more about myself. I've worked with the big brands in the last five years. I've focused specifically on uh, trying to help entrepreneurs uh, stress less about their marketing and to make it more of a meaningful experience. So I do that through what I call marketing coaching, where I do one-on-one -on -one helping them with strategies and working their way through that. But really the big thing is, is that on social, you don't have to do everything. You just really need to understand how your brand can really work on those platforms. And I will get d uh, definitely into that. But I really work on building community, brand awareness and how the, these platforms are really great places for warm leads. I'm also originally from Ohio, if anyone's in the, from the Midwest, I'm, 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 a, I'm a converting New Yorker here and I'm also a certified health coach because I'm sure all of you have felt that burnout that comes with entrepreneurship. So I do like to help my clients work through those things as well. So let me see what I, who, who I've got in here so I can have a good understanding. All right, creative director, graphic designer, amazing. I love that small business consultant and, and home. Clothing alteration. I love that, Nancy. Interesting. Branding and marketing for medium-sized nonprofits. Amazing. 
Oh my gosh, I feel like I have so much to learn from all of you. So this is fantastic. So I'm going to try my best to see if I can help help gravitate to what you guys might need the uh, might need specifically here. So in general, whenever I'm talking to anybody about what they're trying to do online, I start with the brand foundation. So in general, I think that these particular things sometimes feel like you just do them once and you forget them. These are evolving pieces of your uh, of your marketing suite. So in general, who is your audience? What is your story and how do you uniquely solve the problems of that audience? And then what are your five content pillars? So I suggest five content pillars for not only your social, but your email, your website, making sure that in general, people know what to come to you for. And that comes from answering those pain points of what your audience is looking for. So in general, making sure you always keep those things in mind and, and make sure it evolves as you learn more about your, your ideal clientele. So specifically, with your audience and how it adjusts a little bit on LinkedIn is that you want to kind of think about how you can whittle down how you're targeting people on the platform itself. So first and foremost, LinkedIn is a fantastic place, especially now to get to get noticed. Uh, what they've done in the past two years is actually, I would say they're, they're 10 years ago, Facebook uh, mixed with five, five years ago, Instagram. They're trying to really build a community in a way that their feed is something that's trending, that they're giving really great insights, and they're not forcing people to pay for awareness. And in general, they're, they're wanting people to stay on the platform as long as they can. Some of the things they're doing right now is lives and LinkedIn newsletters. We can, we can definitely dive into what those are. But in general, they're giving improved posting performance. So um, in general, it's the top reach platform, excluding TikTok in this, in this particular example. But in general, it's the top reach platform of the traditional social media platforms, which we'll, again, get into a little bit more a little later. But within that, um, when you're trying to get noticed by companies, so this is something Nancy told me that you guys definitely are trying to figure out how to get noticed most. It's not just about the company itself. Who would you be interacting with within that company? So I talk a lot about the pain points of your audience. How can you whittle it down to what their, like if it's a marketing manager within that company, what, how can you whittle it down to what their pain points are specifically? Whether it's they're not seeing an ROI on their designs, they're not, they don't have the time to really understand how it all works together, how you can be that strategist for them and think about them creatively. But there's a, there's a tangible and intangible pain points that you want to consider when you're doing your content and also how you build out your profile so that it is something that people really go after. So in general, uh, when you're thinking about getting noticed by your audience, you've heard this word niche down to exactly the type of role that, uh, the, that would be most, uh, that you'd help the most within those companies that you're looking for. Okay, I want to see if I've got power users in here. So how often do you use LinkedIn currently? Are you in there every day, a few times a week, hardly ever? I want to see who, if, if these, this is my LinkedIn crowd for sure. Okay, hardly ever. We've got a few times a week. Nice. Okay. So it looks like we've got mostly power users, which a couple, but some of you, it's just every once in a while for sure. Okay, so let, so in general, there is a reason you should spend time on LinkedIn really quickly. Uh, LinkedIn is the second highest um, uh, platform where uh, people spend, uh, have a lot of money. So Pinterest is first. It's a, it's a, most of their users at least have 100K or more. Um, uh, LinkedIn comes second with 75K. So in general, if you have high ticket offers, LinkedIn is a fantastic place to be. It's a nice split between women and men. In general, women are heavier social media users on other platforms, but on LinkedIn, it's a 53% women with uh, about 47% men. So you're, you're going to get a nice split between the, both genders. And also, uh, it's that older age range that is ready to buy a little more than some of those younger, the, the, those younger age groups. So a really great place to be. Like I said, this LinkedIn is best in reach currently. So meaning if you have a thousand connections, you have you're likely to at least reach, this is minimum, 200 to 250 people. You can't say that about Facebook. You definitely can't say that about Twitter. Instagram might come close with about 15 to 18%, but in general, you're going to be reaching more people if you start posting on this platform. Um, and within that too, I wanna make sure I mention this too, reach means people see it. Now, Instagram is still the top engage platform. People uh, uh, more regularly interact, but if you're wanting to get brand awareness, LinkedIn is a really great place to be. Separately, it has one of a longer post shelf life, meaning if you post on Monday, people are likely to continue to see that post at least until Thursday. So your eight, it has that four day shelf life that in general, if you are putting, posting up on there, you, you will have people interacting 
<laughs> not only day of, but other days. Now, compare the, comparing that to Twitter, which is, is, is about a 12-hour shelf life, Facebook, which is less depending on what uh, is about 24 to 36 if you're getting engagement. And then Instagram is about 24 to 36 as well. So just thinking about how you can utilize that advantage on LinkedIn is a really important piece. And last but not least, this is a really wonderful place for thought leadership and brand awareness. So meaning you guys are all experts in what you do. So in giving a, a very specific perspective on how to handle some of the, those audience pain points, they're going to want to listen to you guys here. And I'll, and I'll show how that can translate into the way you uh, po post and do your messaging. So one really wonderful piece about LinkedIn, it is no longer a resume and a career platform solely. They in general are trying to make it a full social platform. So you want to think about how you can optimize the profile for ranking and searchability, but also there's been some research showing that your posts perform better if you have an optimized profile. So what that starts with is the searchable title, that top title of what you have or what you do. So what, what, how that plays a role is, of course, you can say, you know, you're an account manager of, 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 um, you know, video production, let's just say this off the top of my head here. If that is, if that describes what you do, sure. But if you want to talk about well, the kind of the kind of things people would search and find you for, it, that's gonna that's gonna perform better for you. I actually have a client of mine right now that does a lot of SEO, and one of her previous roles was she was called video managers because you know companies sometimes give random titles. I encouraged her to switch over to exactly what she did what she did within that company, and she's been able to just get more people interacting with her. So first and foremost. Make sure that whatever title you have has those keywords in the way that people want to find you. The next piece is definitely fill, fulfill that profile image and back, uh, that background photo. Both of those are ways of, of LinkedIn seeing if you are an active user. So I gave both of the, the dimensions that work there, but in general, you want to have you know shoulders up uh, for, for your profile picture. Try not to crop yourself out of a recent photo or, or crop yourself piece out of the recent photo. And then that banner image behind you, it doesn't have to be something crazy. There's a website called Pexels. I'm sure most of you know about it. If you want to just have a desk, a desk version in the back, I have some people put their website slogans as their background. In general, using that banner image, both of those things will optimize your searchability and ranking for the, the profile. And then one last piece here about searchability is that many of you run your own businesses. So I'm encouraging you to create a company page. So what that does is that if you're able to link directly to a company page, you're improving your, the professionalness of your profile, but also, again, they know that you're real. They know that, that you are a real person, and LinkedIn is consistently trying to get rid of bugs and spam accounts that, that are coming through on the platform. So if you're able to create a company profile, you don't have to do that much with the company profile. Give it a name. Make sure you put your logo in there. They'll ask you to do a quick about, uh, about section, so you can absolutely do that. And then you don't really have to touch it. If you'd like to, you can later. But as far as creating one, it takes under five minutes as long as you can just make sure you do that about section and those pieces in there. Moving on here. Now, a lot of what you're going to want to do within the profile specifically is think about your searchability and sell. So, Amy, we, we did have one question on that page. Go ahead. Um, uh, on the, that slide. Can you link to a website or is it better to be to be a company profile on LinkedIn? I would say both. So you would definitely want to have your company website as a part of your, your contact or contact info, but uh, I'll show how, how a company profile is going to play a different role uh, within the profile too. So I, I would, I would have both. And there was one other, how important is it to have people follow your business page? Is it just a numbers game to seem more legitimate? Don't, I wouldn't worry too much about the followers on the business page. In general, uh, the, the, the real sole purpose of why you should have it is so that there's that linking piece in, in your job descriptions below. Um, but then uh, as far as the business pages are concerned, they don't get more reach than personal profiles. So like you, you, I wouldn't worry too much after you, after you set it up. You can just leave it and forget it unless you want to do ads in the future, unless your company becomes big enough if you want to try to use it. Should updates be done on the business pages? Yeah. So in general, only only if you want to reshare th uh, pieces of what you've done. Don't I wouldn't. I definitely don't worry about it. Just mostly set it and forget is what I'm suggesting here. Okay. So next piece here is that about summary section that comes right underneath all of of, of what you're doing on your profile. This is where you want to list your offers. This is where you want to make sure people don't don't have to find what you do for them. So. What first and foremost, there's the superpower statement. So I'm, I don't know if people have talked to you guys about this, but this is where you see that I help 
and then you and you like you give your audience like who your audience is and then x y and z so in general if you want to make sure people know exactly how you help them for me i help entrepreneurs build a community brand awareness and warm leads that's that's my my superpower statement how you can phrase that for yourself that's how you start that summary and then the next piece is like what exactly what your offers are and then getting into how people might search and find you so Going into if someone needs help with email marketing, maybe that's what you need to make sure you po you post in there. If someone needs help with uh, brand like brand design, make sure that those key terms are within that about summary, putting it in a way that uh, is easily legible. So all of us have a really bad attention span. Bullet points are your friend. <laughs> Bullet points are your friend in any of these uh, any of these sections for sure. The next piece is people overlook the job description. So as far as previous work that you've done. This is me wanting to push you to think of it as what you delivered for people versus what you did for people. So delivering the kind of results, whether that's in, in a number format, how, how many things you created for somebody in general, thinking about how what you contributed to a team or to a company was able to give them success or whatever, whatever particular things that you were focusing on, making sure that job description isn't just I attended meetings. You want to you go like I was able to deliver 30% higher traffic, whatever it might be. So definitely think about how you can use those a little easier. Again, make these bullet points instead of paragraphs. We just, our attention spans just aren't there. So try to make sure you, you make the, it easy easy to read. And last point here with, a key, with, that, with that profile is testimonial. So it is still a very important place. So giving and receiving testimonials on a regular basis on the, pro, on the platform is very important. But within that too, if you get testimonials that you're putting on your website, especially if you have a really warm relationship with that client of yours. I usually will say, I love this testimony, I'm adding it on my site. Here's how to put it on LinkedIn if you'd be willing to copy and paste that in there for me as well. So you can have multiple places where people, where people see that other people like you because word of mouth is still one of the best ways to get conversion um, uh, for, for your business. So definitely thinking about it in that way. Okay, so how does this kind of translate? So when I was talking to you guys about that title piece, Here's that title piece. I want people to search and find me when I do social media and brand strategy. So I, and, and in general, it's not the, the titles I may have had before. When I, when you guys were mentioning uh, the website, you have an option whenever people visit, they, they can click directly off to that company website for you. And then also to now you have this, where, what kind of services you offer. So you can, these are all keywords. So they index you within the search, searchability. So that's your, that's that last piece. But big thing here, profile image and some type of related to your business banner banner image it doesn't have to be anything really souped up it can just be something that's simple and easy for you to do the next piece here is that about summary that i was mentioning to you guys so this is where you want to make sure you do that superpower statement here at the top talk about the offers that you have and and fill this last piece with those keywords of how someone might find you and then this is where i'm going to try to kind of talk about how the company pages play a role so i run my own business I created a company page. All I'm really trying to make sure is that when I, when I link to my my business, that this that this logo comes up for me. Versus uh, this is actually a client of mine that I'm working through, so I'm calling her out a little bit here. Here is what it looks like if someone doesn't have a link to your business page. So I'm sure you guys have have tried to get connections from somebody who is like who like has no previous record of uh, uh, like of work that is is connected to a logo or design on the left side, and you're like, is this person real? That's the goal here. You want to make sure you have that and LinkedIn does favor those people that have, have links to the company pages. And then also too, just another reminder that I'm able to show here what kind of results I can give people. The, use, use those job description sections to show what, what you were able to deliver for others. So I saw the chat starting to pop up. Let me go ahead and see what you guys are saying. Um, I start, my service area won't show up. Yeah, like you, I, might, I might have you have to show me. Dan, do you still hear me? Does everyone else still hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I'm sure other people can. I told him he should sign on and off and try okay. that. So we're good. I'll go ahead and move on then. Okay, so after saying everything I just said on a scale from one to five, five being you think your profile is absolutely perfect, where do you feel you would rate yourself right now on, on your LinkedIn profiles as far as making sure you're selling yourself on the platform in an optimized way? two, four, two, two, amazing. Okay. 
So you guys are in a good place. You're able to just go ahead and take these steps and make them actionable for you. For by all means, I, I saw your LinkedIn uh, profile, so I'll, I'll be following you guys along soon. Amazing. Okay, so all, all good areas of room for growth for sure. Now, the reason why you want to have an, an optimized uh, profile is that whenever you're posting, you're in general going to get more interaction. So these are what, this is in general what I'm gonna be recommending. Um, so whenever you are posting, now this is directly into the feed, not, not the LinkedIn article specifically. So this is you posting into the feed directly. For best growth and engagement, I recommend two to four times a week. Remember that long shelf life you have um, with it within the space. So in general, you don't need to go over uh, two to four. You're gonna be able to have, people are gonna see that stuff every week all the way into Friday if you're posting on Tuesday, that kind of idea. So two to four times a week is more than enough. Um, if you're do uh, the original content is better than other things. So in general, all all social media platforms want to keep people on the platform itself. So they they are more favoring people that post a photo that keeps someone within LinkedIn versus linking off to a separate website. Doesn't mean that links don't work. You'll just in general see over time that on average, you're going to get better feedback on a photo that or a video that you upload directly into LinkedIn. Um, so thinking about how a lot of the designers in here, how you can show your creativity with through graphics or, or, or different aspects of what you do. And then what's really wonderful as well about uh, LinkedIn is that they have a really long timing strategy. So most, uh, for instance, if, we, if we're comparing it to Instagram, between three and, three and eight o'clock Eastern Standard is the best time to post on average. Um, but then with LinkedIn, it's like, it's an eight to eight. It's like a nice long thing because people are on LinkedIn during the day. And then even there's even equal opportunity from East Coast to West Coast. So in general, you can at the end of the day go, oh, I need to get something up on LinkedIn. It's okay if you put it up late or if you decide to post it up first thing in the morning. Either one works really well. Let's talk about what posting visuals you should consider. So graphics work exceptionally well on LinkedIn right now. So if they're, if they're easily digestible, tips, tricks, techniques, testimonials, any, any of those pieces that you can put into a simple graphic that um, people will either easily relate to or be able to, to save and want to think about, those are getting really great engagement and really great commentary. So using the, that creativity you have, it's really good to do that. Now photos, images of yourself need to be related to your business in some way. So in general, uh, you don't have to have the, those perfect type of images. If you're showing yourself in your workspace, that works, that works fine. Zoom screenshots, just like what you guys are doing here, work really well as well. In general, LinkedIn is working on trying to compete with how people use Twitter as live ways of talking about a conference, but LinkedIn wants to bring people into that space as well. So if you want to give recaps of, of what you guys do in here or the, the one key, key takeaways or in general wor workshops that you run, all of those pieces can be used doing screenshots, photos. It, ha it can be absolutely informal as well as doing those formal professional photos if you need. Videos are also a really great, great space. However, no need to go over three minutes. So a three minute digestible video is really good on LinkedIn right now. Uploading it directly is, uh, is, is what I'm saying here. So if you have a YouTube video, I'm asking you to download that and upload it directly into LinkedIn just because it's going to give you more reach and more engagement. And they have this wonderful thing where you can app, you can just upload your subtitles directly with the post itself instead of having to create a separate video where the, with the, where the subtitles come in at the bottom. So in general, videos are a really great place. And then finally, text only, especially for my thought leaders on this call, Text only is, is working exceptionally well. So if you have a tweet that worked really well, you can just bring it right over to LinkedIn. Or if you have just a random takeaway thought that you think is gonna be easily relatable, just type it on in and press send. You don't have to create something brand new. You can absolutely just give uh, quotes and, and tidbits within that, especially if you're wanting to, that thought leadership to be a part of what you're doing. So we do have a few comments on this, Jamie. So Reggie said, carousels do big engagement numbers carousels of video of uh, images so I've noticed as far as yeah if, if they're photos specifically so like like actual actual photos versus graphics they that I would say that they they do perform better versus um, if you're if you're trying to do like you know a, let's say five tips I'd put them all on one and on one thing uh, one graphic versus if you're trying to do oh here's the five photos from my recent event that I did like that that's going to perform better more so than if you did five separate graphics does that make sense yeah um oops sorry um 
And Yamilka said, so instead of uploading YouTube videos, I should add them on LinkedIn? Yes. So what, again, what they're trying to do is keep people on the platform. So they they usually do not give as much reach to YouTube videos. If you do it like linking off to a YouTube video versus if you upload it directly into LinkedIn. And Marjorie asked, do I need to get people's permission to post a screen capture from a Zoom presentation? Definitely depends on the group. So I would, I would say, you know, it, amongst, amongst the people that I end up talking to, we kind of go like, hey guys, I'm taking a photo for social. And, and people will either turn their cameras off or turn them on. But it's definitely something that I think it really, it's dependent on the group and the kind of what they're com what's comfortable for sure. Great. All right, great. So I wanted to kind of show some examples here. So this is a, a previous client of mine. This is, a, she, she wrote a book about resilience and in general she's, uh, she does leadership programs. This is what I would call like, you know, pushing those uh, quick digestible five tips into a graphic. This is what I would talk about as text only works just as well. So thinking about how you can utilize those, th uh, utilize these pieces for what you do for your, uh, your audience. Okay, so let's get into copy itself. So whenever you're posting on LinkedIn, what's a little different versus some other uh, platforms is that you want to ask or ask how you want people to interact with you early. So what that means is you can ask a question uh, at, the, at the very top, like, what are you struggling with right now for your business? That could be the question you ask. And then you can get into what you've been working with with your clients um, or in general what, with the kind of program you're creating. At the top is where people end up clicking in to reading more. So by, if you have a way of hooking them in with a keyword about what you're talking about and asking them a question or, you know, come to my upcoming event, this is what we're talking about, you want to make sure you use that, that first sentence to pull people in as well as see if you can get some engagement right off the bat. So questions are a really great place for this so that people can give their give what they think or give what's going on with their business in, in the comment section. So definitely think, think of that. Right now, 100 to 150 words is something that works really well. So you can go for length here um, and you can, ha you can definitely go into some description. So that middle value and story relatability piece is where you might give uh, what you worked on with the client, how you can talk about the details of your programs, really getting into um, you know people understanding exactly what you're about is is very helpful in the copy. So definitely take a little bit of the, that time to show your expertise, show what you've learned with your uh, what's going on with your business, and and making sure that copy works really well for you. Okay, so out of curiosity, other than LinkedIn, what other social channels are you guys most active on? Okay, Instagram, Twitter, Instagram, a lot of Instagrammers. All right, Facebook and Twitter. Okay, only LinkedIn. Okay, Facebook group specific. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm intrigued by all my Facebookers in here. Clubhouse, Marjorie, I'm intrigued. Okay, awesome, this is great. Okay, so in general, what I wanted to get into here is that there's a lot to be said about how you can just take content you've created on other platforms and reframe it into LinkedIn. So I'm not suggesting you post the same thing across every platform, but how you can just adjust those pillars I mentioned earlier, the, those five categories that you regularly talk about and just, you know, adjust them a little bit more. So more so than any other platform, you want to talk about client and customer experience, what feedback you've been getting, what I call is indirect selling. So in general, on any post, you can mention the names of your programs, names of the products that you're working with so that they in general know the kind of offerings you have on a regular basis versus a direct sell might be you definitely need to sign up for my program coming up. You can, in general, use that within those spaces. But this is where you celebrate what's happening behind the scenes at your business. So those big and small wins, the like a new new product development in general, giving the behind the scenes is going to work really well for you. The next piece here is that you absolutely your goal is going to be on LinkedIn to never have someone guess what you offer. So in general, on when you're posting making sure that you, you know, subliminal message or in, or directly talk about exactly what's going on and what what your company is about. The third piece here is that you want to give your perspective on what's going on in your industry. So when you go to a workshop or a business event, there's one thing about just sharing, oh, I went to this event, it was great, versus this is my takeaways and how I'm going to implement it in my business. So doing those recaps and of those workshops are really uh, helpful here. And then this is me also pushing you guys that this is the platform that you educate and brag about what you know. 
So in general, you want to you want to share that expertise of yours loud and proud. Give tips on a regular basis, and then if you have a really successful week, really successful moment, this is where people want to shout each other out. So in general, do not feel too timid to talk about some really big things that are happening in your business here. So reframe in general those pillars that we talked about and how it might just be a little heavier on your offers, a little heavier on behind the scenes of your business on that this platform in comparison to the Instagrams and Twitters that you guys were talking about that you are also active on. And then within that, repurpose. Repurpose the stuff you do. So in general with my clients, I have a lot of people who are Instagram heavy and I will say, let's look at Instagram's content calendar last month and what is evergreen? What is something that's gonna to continue to work really well for your clients? How can we transition that over to LinkedIn so that what would, what would the adjustment be? For instance, carousels on, on uh, Instagram work really well. We have that swipe feature for graphics specifically. If I'm bringing it over to LinkedIn, I would tell them to make it into one graphic, how you can just optimize depending on that platform. I do want to emphasize here, don't post, at the same, don't post the same content at the same time. Essentially, um, you're wanting people to follow you on everything. So if they see the same thing on more than one platform at the same time, I would, I, I, like, they're not going to have that in, in, um, incentive to follow you in both places. So if you post something specific about uh, on Monday of this week on Instagram, maybe you wait till Thursday of next week on LinkedIn, just so you know our attention spans forget that you posted it on Monday and then we see it on LinkedIn and in general are still able to pull it in. That client that I mentioned to you guys before, we repurpose our stuff all the time because everyone needs a, more, a little more resilience but we make sure we do it in a way that we just optimize the content on a regular basis and it's able to continue to bring that, that engagement rate that works really well. There's a lot of people who hate the algorithm that talk really like they just hate the algorithm so much. Use them to your advantage because people do people see a whole bunch of posts all the time. In general, they, they don't see them in a, like, a, like it's not a linear algorithm anymore. So they, they might see them later. In general, the algorithm is going to allow you to bring a consistent message and keep going after those high performing posts that you've had before so that uh, you can have that, in, that engagement rate and really keep going after that message that seems to respond, that your audience responds to the most. So definitely don't forget the power of repurposing so you don't have to reinvent that wheel every time you're creating content. And then here, let's so go ahead and dive into LinkedIn articles. So when LinkedIn articles was a new feature, it was fantastic. People were able to see a whole bunch of growth for it because LinkedIn was pushing it very heavily in the feed. It's not that way anymore unless you're consistent. So if you guys want to do LinkedIn articles, you are, I would say, if you want to get some return on it, you're buying into at least posting a LinkedIn article once a week or more. So making sure that you have that time to do that. Um, but on average, a, a, a post that's related to a LinkedIn article does not perform as highly as a post itself. So if you're going to spend more time on LinkedIn, Post those graphics, post those text, text only pieces because those articles may not pull you in as much. Now, the uh, LinkedIn newsletter is their version of trying to get people to continue to do those articles. So the newsletter is I subscribe to someone's newsletter so I always see their articles that come through. But that's a, you know, that's a whole other piece of how you're trying to incentivize people. So I would, I would tell you that unless you're really a writer and want to, and want to uh, use the platform that way, there's no reason that you have to be a LinkedIn article uh, power user. What you can do instead, which is what I recommend below, is that uh, you can repurpose some of your old blog content. So if you're working on building SEO to your website, blogs are wonder a wonderful place to be. But uh, for LinkedIn specifically, maybe you use some evergreen content that was from three months ago that you can just go ahead and give it new life on LinkedIn. The reason I say wait, wait that amount of time is that right now LinkedIn doesn't have a way to remove backlinks. So in general, if you post a blog on your website um, and you post it on LinkedIn at the same time, they would be competing in searchability. So you want your website to be your primary place, give it some time and put it, and then put it on LinkedIn because you'll, you won't have uh, the, those, uh, those two pieces uh, competing. And Jamie, is it a, a bad idea to start your article on LinkedIn and jump it to your website? where you, you link to your website to finish reading it? It depends on where you're getting better conversion. If your website is where you're going to get conversion the most, I would, I would say that that's not a good idea. You want to start on your website. But if you're getting regular leads through LinkedIn, start on LinkedIn first. So the, the main piece is that 
um, you, uh, depending on what your SEO goals are for your, your business, you, you just don't want too many things to be competing with each other if you put them in the, the same article in two places. Now, something like Medium, Medium removes the, the SEO backlink. You can go in there and actually remove it so that uh, it only it only is searchable, that article is only searchable within the Medium community. And then if someone searches something on Google, your website is going to come up first. So I, I would say if, if LinkedIn is your primary conversion platform and your website is just not doing that for you, sure, start on LinkedIn first. But um, I would I would usually recommend have your website be the first place you post things so you can build that SEO for it. What I what I meant was, I mean, how is it? How does LinkedIn view it? If I I have it posted on my website and I do a little snippet on LinkedIn and then I link to the website to finish reading it, does LinkedIn uh, not like you to be taken off of LinkedIn? Oh, okay. So you're so you're you're saying you would give one piece and then link off to the blog post on your website. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So essentially, uh, kind of similar to what I was mentioning, they don't want you to they don't want you off the platform. So in general, they they don't give as much reach. Again, it's it's it, it, that this is on average. So if you if you're regularly doing that, you'll sometimes see that links do really well. Just they're not consistent versus photos and videos. Um, so what I, I would say is that, yeah, absolutely do that. There's nothing wrong with it, but you just mean, you want to make sure you also supplement that with graphics and photos that, you're, that you know you're going to get that engagement on. Okay, so last, be, uh, last piece here is that uh, LinkedIn growth and engagement. So as far as growth on LinkedIn, a lot of it comes from outside sources. So coming to workshops like this and sharing your LinkedIn profile, a lot of that stuff is going to build your following and connections most. But as far as what you want to do on the platform itself is that LinkedIn groups is still a really great place to be. However, you want to think about the size of the groups. So, you know, the LinkedIn groups can get up to 10,000 people and in general, like they're really big. You want to try to stay in that 2000 people or less and making sure that you're giving insightful comments within those industry groups on a regular basis. So um, as far as the way that the algorithm works with the LinkedIn groups, they won't push any of those posts out unless it's getting a decent amount of engagement. So uh, Facebook groups is a little different the, the way they do the, the algorithm for LinkedIn groups. It must have engagement before they even consider it getting into the feed. So think about how uh, you might want to give really insightful comments on those industry groups and that can help you out for sure. The next piece, and this is something I suggest on all social platforms, is that you guys all should get in the habit of commenting more than you like. One, the algorithm is going to be able to give you more insightful posts if you, if you give uh, good comments, but also it's the top place to find partnerships and to really uh, go ahead and get some reciprocity happening with you. So if you give really good comments on someone who has a like-minded audience, they either will likely come back and, and want to connect with you and comment for you, or the people that follow that person are going to be more likely to come over to you as well. So if there's anything you take from this presentation is comment more than you like because that is going to build uh, your profile awareness um, not only with the algorithm because all social platforms want more community but also you're going to have those much warmer leads come in for you. Last piece here is that outreach uh, and uh, is very important to have personalization and timing. Coming from somebody who's been the uh, filterer of someone's uh, LinkedIn inbox, there's there's bad messaging and there's great messaging. So uh, as far as uh, what you, how you want to reach out to someone and create those warm leads, you want to take the time to personalize. Whether it's mentioning something they're posting in their feed, easy place to be. I really love that post. I, I've seen it with my business. I wanted to connect about it. Versus someone who says, I think we might we might be good in business together. I get I get that a lot from some of my clients and you're like, well, but why? <laughs> well, why would we be good in business together? Giving, giving that personalization is really important. Uh, the other side of, uh, of it is, is that you don't want to waste too much time when you meet someone virtually or in person. So if, if any of you guys connect with me today, please mention that I saw you at Creatives Roundtable. I will more likely to connect with you and want to message with you, understanding how we made our first interaction for sure. And in general, what current data shows is that when you do meet somebody, they either they follow you on Instagram first and LinkedIn comes as a short second. So you're able to really build networks by the net or the, your social networks by what you do in, in real life as well. So I see the chat is coming in. So let me go ahead and see what you guys are asking. For some reason, every once in a while, Zoom won't show me the chat. I got to like keep you want me to read them to you. Yes, please. Okay, that'd be great. Um, Nancy Rose says, can you write the article and share it with content? 
might need yeah. you to explain that a little more. Nancy Rhodes, can you unmute and explain that? Yeah. Yes. So basically, um, you were talking about like the articles don't get as much reach, but like, let's say you write an article just so you have a long form and then you share it like every week or two with different pieces of the article in it. Or do you share a little bit of content from it with a picture and link to the article? So of the two that you said, the latter is better. So if you if you have if you give like one key tip and then a link a link off to the article, I would say that's going to perform better for you than giving those those chunks along the way. Okay. Um, you know what? I'm going to ask Gail to um, unmute and read her question too. Sure. So were you saying that you said to recycle your blog posts from months ago? Are you saying to post that as a LinkedIn article? Like the yes. same exact thing? Okay, yeah, so you're, you're not saying- you Literally copy and paste what you've done on your blog post as long as it's been a few months between when you post it on your, on your um, website and on LinkedIn. Barbara, would you like to read yours? Sure, um, I'm constantly getting requests from everyone, you know, and um, financial advisors, all this stuff. And my question is, do, do you accept everyone or are you, kind of want to stick with your target audience? Um, I would say I do not accept everyone because I think that it, it, you want to make sure that the people who do follow you are going to engage with you, not just somebody who's immediately trying to, you know, it want, you want it to feel like a mutual relationship. So mm -hmm. I definitely have kind of like, depending on the client that I have, we have a bit of a checklist of would this be a partnership in the future? Are they in general t talking about similar things that I do? Um, is it somebody that like, you know, you've met in, in real life because in general, they'll have a little more skin in the game to want to interact with you versus Great. somebody who's just randomly, you know, yeah, just trying to sell me death yeah. insurance. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it's either, it's, it's either stock options or, or insurance. I feel like those are the most cold messages I get for sure. Right. It's like, what? <laughs> I'm still going to delete them then. <laughs> yeah. Marjorie was pretty much the same uh, as Justina's was as well. Um, I saw your profile as a recommended connection. I mean, and they wanted to get in touch, which is a, a thing I've been seeing a lot lately too. Um, kind of crazy. Which is, I mean, it's it's nice that you get recommended, but tell me why you want to be my connection. I think that with LinkedIn especially, because what you can do is you can connect or you can follow. So they can just follow your posts. Why do you want to connect with me directly so you can so you can message with me? I think they're, they're, you, you have the right to ask a little more for sure. And if you do ask them, do you then... Um, do you then, are you linked to them or do you get, you know, do they, can they continue to talk to you? Like, can they start selling to you? Or like, if I say, you know, what exactly do you want from me? Or, you know, I mean, sometimes I have people look at my profile and I'll say, you know, where are you looking because I'm the competition or, you know, like I have, a, I have a, like a few scripts that I write, you know, can, are you looking for graphic design, whatever it is. Um, but, um, what what do you say about people who try to converse with you who are not connected? You continue, does the conversation continue? I mean, I would say, I, I mean, it's definitely, it's up to your energy for sure. If you, if you are if from, from like the first interactions, if you don't feel like it's the right thing, I mean, it depends. And if, if they decide to do an in message with you, or if, if like that's their invitation, you guys can delete your connections just so you know so they so they you can remove their ability to message you if you did agree to invite and talk to them but I would definitely get directly into this is what I'm doing with my business right now how do you think you can help me and if they're ready to sell you kind of be like I'm not looking for it and then again like I've had people that uh, with some of my clients that continue to try to push something on them I'm like we don't need this right now I'm, I'm like I will delete you if you continue like because there's a lot of those people that will continue to push and sell pretty hard when it's just only leaving a bad taste in our mouth, like with, with us. So in general, there's, I would, I give, I give all of you the permission to be like, you know what? I don't need stress on LinkedIn. This is, this is the way in which I want to set some boundaries. And you can also report people because I had someone who was extremely inappropriate and I reported them. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, that's, that's what it's there for, for sure. So I would love to continue ans asking questions. I wanted just to throw this out here. I told you guys a lot about content. I told you guys a lot about the brand foundation. I created a mini course because I know this stuff is pretty difficult. I'll make sure to put it in the chat and send it to Nancy so you guys have it. It's, it's a 20 minute mini course just to how to really develop that brand foundation and make sure you're able to build out 30 days of content if you guys are interested. 
So let me go ahead and I'll stop the share so I can answer any, uh, any other d additional questions from you guys. Amy? I have a question. Um, I guess this is geared toward designers, but um, I noticed some people have like a samples of their work in their LinkedIn. Is that like important thank, or? Thank you so much for mentioning that to me because I, I should have mentioned it. Yes. So within each job description, you can link off to your offers. You can link off to your portfolio. In general, it's a, uh, it does, it, it, I w make sure it's the, the best of your work for sure, but it, it's a wonderful way of doing a portfolio. So I, I would heavily recommend that. And if, if it's a, if you can do it in a way that links off to somewhere for you, it's going to, it's going to work out really well for you as well. Okay. Thanks. Marjorie. Yeah, I mean, I notice sometimes people might look at my profile, but then they don't try to connect with me. And I, Nancy, it sounds like you you see that too, and you send them out um, a note. So, is that what you recommend, Jamie? That you know. You sorry, follow? repeat. Sorry, I, I missed the main point of that. Go ahead, repeat it. That's all right. No worries. Sometimes I notice somebody's looked at my profile or a business mm -hmm. has, but they haven't reached out to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're recruiting, snooping, whatever they're doing. But do you recommend that? I reach out to them and absolutely if, if it's somebody you want to be connected with like be a, you know find a I, I it'll feel weird to say hey I saw you were snooping wanted to connect but <laughs> like but in general I think if they're if it's somebody you absolutely want to connect with take some time to look at their social and be like you know hey I I, I, I took a look at what you were saying because I the, what will happen if you do that is there oh, I was thinking of you and you connected with me. I just never clicked the button. So in general, I, I would, if, if, especially if it's a really good partnership in the future, I would, I would absolutely reach out and, and connect because people will be more likely to accept for sure. I believe Ignacio looked at my profile and I invited him to the event. So Perfect. yeah, there we go. <laughs> what do you think of stories? Uh, well, I will say that LinkedIn stories are still in its early stages. <laughs> so in general, I would like when you uh, it's it's a play, it's a play place right now. So play around with it. I especially if you guys are talking about your offers and your business, it's an easy like, you know, save from Instagram and bring it on over to LinkedIn. But as far as performance wise, there's not some good data out there just yet of why you should spend the time on it. I'm sure they'll fix it. I'm sure it'll come up just like Twitter's fleets or something that's going to be something soon. They, they just got to figure out how it's going to work uh, for getting people using it a little more. So LinkedIn's just in its early stages of that. Justina? So following up on that topic, I know Instagram gives a lot of push and promotion to profiles that use their new tools. Like for example, when Reels came out, they started really pushing them in the discovery because they were they wanted to highlight people that were using the new tools. Do you know if LinkedIn is doing the same thing for their stories? Not that I've seen so far. So I, LinkedIn did mirror that for their um, for LinkedIn articles when they first came out. So they they did mirror that where they pushed those out pretty heavily. LinkedIn Lives are seem to be a very important piece for what they're doing right now. So that 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 could be something of interest because they have been pushing those in the feed a little bit. They don't have a, a very good user interface for what happens after the live. So I'm, I'm intrigued to see how they're going to change that. Newsletters is a new, a new feature for them. Again, I haven't seen it come into the feed. I only see it coming in invites. So I, I don't see them doing the same thing right now. So I, 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 as far as how Instagram uses those pieces, um, I, LinkedIn has yet to, to mirror it. Yeah. I don't know so much about uh, LinkedIn groups. I'm more familiar with Facebook groups. Do you suggest that we start our own group on LinkedIn too? Um, well, it depends. So, if, so LinkedIn groups, there's a, definitely a little more heavily industry specific where Facebook, here's the thing, here's what's going on with groups specifically. Facebook is having a mass exodus that even their groups are starting to not see as much engagement as they used to. LinkedIn groups just doesn't perform the same way as Facebook groups because, um, LinkedIn isn't pushing out those posts as much as Facebook is. So there's, there's, there's pros and cons to either one. I've seen for specifically for LinkedIn, you want to be more like you want to be posting more. So for Facebook, I might say two to two times a week in a free Facebook group was more than enough for LinkedIn. You might want to make sure you're in there two, two to five times so you can build up that engagement and making sure that almost all of the posts have to be about conversation so that you're, so you're building a commentary more so than, you know, just posting, a, a photo that somebody might like. 
Um, but I would say, uh, depending on what you're doing, uh, I, that Facebook is going to give you more reach for what you do, where LinkedIn should be a little more industry specific. So Yelp has a community of what, like 125, 150 people. Um, wow, that's awesome. Would that be something where she could start a group and then attract others to that group? So you have that on Facebook right now is what you're saying? And then you're, you're on wanting to- Slack. Oh, on Slack, okay. Um, in all honesty, I would say try it out. Uh, I, just, just I, I, have, I do have a, a, a client of mine that we have it on both places. We just have a lot more difficulty getting engagement on LinkedIn than we do on Facebook groups. So that, as far as LinkedIn groups are concerned, it's it's a focus area for them. It's just they they they've been focusing a lot more on what's happening directly in the feed, and and their classes is kind of they just LinkedIn groups doesn't seem to be their priority. So I've been using a couple of pods to get uh, my engagement up. Um, are those good? Are those bad? Did we get kicked off for them? I mean, what's uh... Now, Instagram monitors pods much more heavily than LinkedIn does. So in general, it's no, there's nothing wrong with pods on LinkedIn if you're wanting to make sure you're keeping that engagement. I would I would just venture off of uh, to make sure that if you're doing pods, make sure you you also comment outside of uh, outside of that pod because you'll likely just not be surfacing to the same people if you like you you're when you in general when you guys comment on each other's things. I like my audience will see your post. But if that's what I, in general, just know you always engage with them, they'll, in general, like, it won't work as well in the feed. Um, okay. But I would, if, if you're spending the time in the pod, just make sure you also spend out, time outside commenting as well. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Any other questions? One last thing, because it's on my mind. Big thing, uh, uh, big things are, when I was talking about repurposing, is that we just, we're, there's so much content out there that you can absolutely continue to uh, just reuse things that our attention spans and we forget things. So I want, I don't want you guys to feel stressed about how I told you to post more often. Just finding ways to repurpose is going to do really well for you. I think someone asked for the link. I went ahead and put it in the chat too about, about that mini course I was mentioning as well. And I will email it out to everyone um, as along with Jamie's website. Um, do you know the thing about uh, the hack about um, the little where it says that you can um, say your name, that you can actually put an elevator pitch in there. Oh, I haven't seen that. That's actually interesting to me. Yeah, I have not seen that. I'll have to take a look. Has anyone tried that in this group? I'll show you mine. Yeah. Ooh, awesome. Um, I did not come up with it, but you know, you have this little thing. Hi, I'm Nancy Ruzzo from Ruzzo Graphics. I provide graphic design and strategy that helps you better connect and communicate with your customers. Let's connect. Oh my gosh, I, you taught me something. That's cool. No, I, I have not seen that. So I, I, I'm going to go do that right after this call. That's you can awesome. only set it up on your phone. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. at least Ben and showed me that. I'm not taking the credit for it. Well, either way, that was a great elevator pitch. You did great in that. Um, Thank you. I, I, em, uh, let's see. Emerald did ask about the five pillars. Essentially, the five pillars are those common categories. It's in that mini course. I go, I dive into it even deeper. I also host these things called content sprints, three Wednesdays out of the month. Uh, so the two, you spend two and a half hours with me building out 30 days of content. So if you guys are interested, I'll make sure that Nancy has that as well. Um, but what the five pillars are, are essentially you choosing from your pain points and your interests, how those intersect and regularly talking about them on your social account. So I always say your story is like a mandatory fifth, at least one of the, one of those pillars. So you can talk about why you do what you do, the struggles you may have had in general, the kind of energy you get from the kind of work you do. But the other four pillars kind of work within your audience, your pain points, your interests. Okay. Well, thank you very much. This was chock full of information. I really loved it. Um, and we'll be sending out a recap to everybody with, uh, not a recap, I didn't take notes, but um, a, uh, you know, a, a link to the video once it's up and um, then uh, Jamie's information as well. Amazing. It was such a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Bye guys. Thank you, Jamie. Bye. Bye.